frustrated trying to take great trial photos in crowded places, or maybe you've taken a photo that was a little too tight and part of the mountain or building is cut off. Lightroom and Photoshop have added so many AI tools over the years, but recently two of them really stood out for me. The first is Lightroom's People Removal tool, which helps clean up crowded travel photos in seconds. And the second is Photoshop's Generative Expand, which helps you improve composition by adding space around the subject without changing the story of your image. Today, I'll walk you through how I use both these tools on real travel photos, and more importantly, how to use AI to enhance your travel photography. But before we jump into the edits, I want to pause for a second. Have you ever asked yourself why you want to learn photography, especially now in the age of AI? Because let's be honest, it's totally possible that one day or perhaps already now, AI will generate images that look more real, more perfect, and more beautiful than what you can capture. But photography has never been just about perfect images. It's about finding the extraordinary in the ordinary, being present in the moment, seeing the world through your unique perspective, and creating lasting memories that actually mean something to your life. While AI can help us edit faster, or sometimes even better, it can't replace the experience of seeing, feeling, and remembering the world through your own eyes. With that said, let's get into the tools that have genuinely improved some of my past travel photos with a faster, more efficient, workflow. First, let's talk about dealing with big crowds at epic viewpoints or landmarks. Even with perfect timing, it's almost impossible to capture a clean shot without someone walking into the frame. That's where Lightroom's people removal tool comes in. Look at this photo taken at Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC many years ago. The crowd was overwhelming. Now look, with just one click, Lightroom gets rid of all the people in the background. It works almost like magic. It detects and removes people from your photos in seconds while keeping the background intact. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's reset it. You can see all these people in the background watching sunset. It's beautiful and it's magic. By the way, I'm using Apple MacBook Pro, just in case you're curious. So it literally took less than one second. All the people oh. except my subject. Of course, no AI tool is perfect. When the background is too detailed or when people overlap with your main subject, it might not cling perfectly. That's why I always say the AI edit tools are meant to assist, not to replace thoughtful photography. For this image, all right, let's say reset. I'm using the same preset and adjust my exposure. And now when I click removal tool or Q and I click on people, it doesn't detect any people in the background. I don't know why. But my guess is these people in the background overlapped with my subject. And this one was not even a person, it was a pigeon. So I don't think this one worked very well. Sometimes AI is definitely not perfect. For example, here in Peru, in Cusco, anyone who wanted to visit Machu Picchu, pretty much all visited this town. Okay, reset it. Let me click R just to level the photo, okay? And let me do this. Q on my keyboard, click on people, look, immediately. Seven seconds. Voila, done. Now. It looks like everything is perfect, but let me enlarge it. 
Did you notice some kind of the cleanup is not perfect and there's a halo around my subject's hairline. So apparently there are people standing right behind my subject, meaning the distraction is overlapping. This is the situation I realized that the people removal tool doesn't work very well. But other than that, the previous examples I showed you all have something in common. Did you notice the people in the background either are very small and very distant and very blurred out and not so much overlapping with the subject. And this is the situation that this people removal tool works the best. But when you have subjects and the background distraction overlapping with each other, this is the tricky moment, hit or miss. I would say more miss than the hit. Let's see this photo, for example. All right, let me click Q on my keyboard or removal tool, click people. And this is also funny. Instead of selecting all the distraction in the background, they also selected my subject. Sometimes you can actually select the part that you don't want to delete. But unfortunately, if I select my subject and delete it, it also deselected all the people in the background. So this photo, for some reason, people removal tool totally doesn't work. Okay, all right. It took 10 seconds and only deleted some of the people right here in the corner, which doesn't really help that much. The tools are absolutely magical when it works, but it doesn't work in all situations, especially when the subject and the people in the background overlap with each other. Camera technique will always be my first solution to achieve clean compositions. But tools like Lightroom's people removal have made me shoot more freely these days. I used to shift angles or give up shots just to avoid crowds. Now I would probably give up less and capture the frame I really want anyway and clean it up later if I need to. Because I know it takes only seconds. By the way, if you want to learn how to take clean travel photos in a camera, even in busy tourist spots, check out my video, How to Take Great Travel Photos in Crowded Places. I'll also give you a link in the description below. All right, the second tool is Photoshop's Generative Expand. And this one surprised me. To be honest, I rarely use Photoshop anymore. Lightroom has become powerful enough for most of my editing but Generative Expand gives me a reason to reopen it. When I shoot candid or documentary style travel photos, I work really fast. Often when both my subjects and I are on the move. Sometimes I might not always get the composition I wanted, especially when I use a prime or telephoto lens and end up with a shot that looks too tight. Building top might get cropped out, or a mountain peak might just miss the frame. Generative Expand solves this problem for me in seconds. It can intelligently add background, skies, ground, water, or even architecture that blends seamlessly with your image. Now let's take a look at the Generative Expand tool in Photoshop. I'm still in Adobe Lightroom right now. Let's see. This photo taken in Banff. I think this picture might look more charming if I have shown a little bit more of the mountain. So what I want to do is go to the photo in the menu and select Edit in Photoshop. Or you can use the shortcut Command E in Apple or Control E for Window. Here we go. We're gonna be in Photoshop. You can click on your keyboard command minus sign to minimize the size of the photo. What you need to do is click on crop here and just recompose photo. You can lock in the ratio. For example, my original ratio is two by three. So this is two by three. 
and then here click generative expand you don't need to type any prompt just click on the check sign so after a few seconds let's see what will happen i expect to see more mountains and this generative expand gave me exactly that beautiful so save and then you can see the progress of saving and then it will go back to adobe lightroom here you can see the photo that's the original that's the new one pretty cool if you have originally shot a photo a scene too tight you can expand it using ai now let's look at a different example of a photo taken in the city first of all let me reset it that was the original let me just quickly use my retouch preset and now when i click r on my keyboard leveling the photo what happened is my finger is cut out and also there's way too much empty sky in the photo not a great composition to start with anyway let's see what ai can do minimize the size and click crop tool i want to put the person in this location and hopefully i'll have my fingers back let's see what happens we have locked in the ratio still two by three and we have the generative expand here selected click the check sign and after a few seconds this depends on the speed of your computer all right looks pretty cool the new photo apparently extended the pants perfectly now let's look at the fingers i will tell you ai doesn't work on fingers very well similar to adobe lightroom's people removal tool generative expanding photoshop when it works it's great it's magical but it certainly has its shortcomings ai has to use its imagination to come up with the part that's not in your photos and that imagination sometimes works sometimes doesn't you definitely don't even want to try to add the missing arm missing hands missing fingers that's something i have tested multiple times it doesn't work very well but in situations like this a person looks in all in front of a beautiful mountain ranges taken in china at the tibetan border i wanted to review some parts of the mountain as well so let's go to photoshop again Let's minimize the image, go to the cropping tool, expand it, and maybe I put the person slightly on the left side of the image instead of right in the middle, and change transparent default into generative expand. Click the check mark, just wait, breathe, enjoy, expect the magic. This is the type of the photo that will work. When your image, especially the background, looks very clear and it's not very complicated, it works perfect. Look at the ground, even I have the foreground blurred, the extension part also looks blurred, the mountain looks great, beautiful, safe. In summary, I find generative expand most useful in three main situations. The first one, to fix tight composition where I cut off part of the background accidentally. Two, to rebalance composition, adding space in the direction my people subject is looking or moving to. And the third, to recover edges after straightening a tilted shot. Sometimes hands, feet, or shoes get propped out and this tool can restore them. Though sometimes it might be a hit or miss.
Look at this photo. This new shoe added by AI doesn't look the same as the other shoe. It's kind of like comedy. So be very careful when you use the tool and double check your result and avoid laughable results like this. Here's one of my favorite examples. I recently photographed an aloha structure in Hawaii and look, Photoshop even extended the missing A's perfectly on both sides. Pretty impressive. Of course, if you're doing a commercial shot where absolute accuracy is vital, it might not always work perfectly. Look at the real ceiling behind the Aloha structure. You can tell the AI imagination wasn't accurate. If you're interested in learning more about how I approach composition, check out my past video on my favorite six composition tips. I'll leave you a link in the description below as well. Now you know why these new AI tools have become my new favorites. Not because they change how I photograph or what photography means to me, but because they help me refine the photos I've already captured, especially from places I may never visit again. Out of curiosity, I revisited some of my old travel photos over the past five years or even earlier. I was happy to give new life to quite a few photos I loved but never shared because of the cluttered backgrounds with a crowd or tight framing. Thanks to Lightroom's people removal and Photoshop's generative expand tools. I'm curious now, how do you view the impact of AI on your photos and your photography journey? Are you embracing the AI or resisting it? For me, I know we can't reverse the trend of AI. So why not use it with intention while keeping an authentic voice in your photos? Use AI to enhance your result, but stay grounded in your photo experience. The act of seeing, observing, and being present is not something that can be replaced by AI or anyone else. Photography isn't about taking pictures. It's about training your eyes and mind to interpret the world in your own visual language and to capture what truly matters to you. As we practice, we'll eventually find our own inner voice and connect deeply with our true self and happiness. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with any photo enthusiasts who might need it. Thanks so much for watching and keep documenting what makes you feel alive.